Hey everybody, this is the real Quaid here. Uh, fresh off of my opening of the Blue Apple starter set, I figure I'd take this opportunity to quickly explain what the cards mean. Uh, I feel like this is kind of important to know before we get into the rules itself. I think it's important to know the parts of what each card does, just so that when I explain the rules, it sort of makes more contextual sense when I say things like Inner Charge and Guard and Signy and stuff like that. At least you have a basis of what all that stuff means. So there are four types of cards in We Cross. Um, I've separated them out into their four piles of what they are. Um, we Cross is unique from a uh, game like Magic: The Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh, or um, you know the more popular uh, Western um, trading card games. In that We Cross actually has two decks to it. Um, in one deck are spell cards and signy cards. Uh, now, spell cards are essentially what you would expect them to be if you have uh, a Magic the Gathering background. So, as far as the parts of the card itself, um, each card has a color to it. This is blue. Um, of course, they have a name. Each has a spell cost, so this has a cost of one. Um, we Cross is somewhat similar to Magic, where you'd pay um, strictly what the cost is, so this would cost one blue and you'd have to pay a blue, you couldn't use a, a red or whatever. Some spells will have multiple different costs to it, I don't have any near me um, that have weird multiple color costs or anything like that, but this would be, you know, the cost you'd pay. Um, of course we've got art, uh, the effects of the spell are down here, um, and you basically, you cast spells only on your turn and only during your main phase before your attack phase. So these, this is essentially a sorcery card, if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering. Um, there kind of is such a thing as an instant, which I'll get to later, but all the spell cards you have in your hand are, basically they work as sorceries in Magic the Gathering. So nothing too out of the ordinary for this one. Um... Again, if you're familiar with Magic the Gathering, it should come pretty natural. So the Signy, uh, the, again, these go in the same deck, and you can tell because they have the black backs on them. So these these essentially make up what I would consider to be um, like your library in Magic the Gathering. This is where you're drawing from. This is where, um, you know, if you needed to discard cards from your deck, they would go there. Um, but this is a Signy card. This is analogous to like a creature card in Magic the Gathering. So again, color, name. This is the level of the Signy, uh, which will come into play later, and we'll talk about that when we talk about what the L-Rig is and what the level actually means of the Signy. Again, artwork, um, any additional effects for the Signy that happen. This has an on-play effect, which you can tell because it has a blue um, little pentagon here. Um, the power of the Signy, which would it's kind of um, a combination of both attack and defense in Magic the Gathering. It's actually, this power is much more related to like a creature's power in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as that. Another thing that's different on these, um, the Signy cards, um, uh, spells are like this too, but I just happen to have one here. This has a restriction on it, so again, I can't read Japanese, so I don't know precisely what it says. But essentially, this box right here means that only Pure Look can cast this Signy. Um, again, this spell doesn't have any limits on it, so there's no box here. But if there was a, a limit to which Signy could use this card, it would be located right here. This right here is like the creature type of this card. Um, I don't remember exactly what type this is. Um, all of the, the Signy, all of the colored Signy in this deck share whatever this type is, and that's true across all of the starter sets, all of the Signies in the stars all share the same type. And that could be important for other cards that have effects for if certain Signy are on the field or that sort of thing. Um, this is another Signy card. Um, you can see most of the, the thing, this is a colorless Signy card, so this is the colorless a level 2 Signy. Um... This is, I believe this is a servant type. Um, again, additional effects. This one I wanted to point out because it has an additional shield here. This is a guard effect. Um, when we get into um, combat, I'll explain what this guard means, but this is an important thing to know. Also, this card 
has a life burst effect on it, which again, when we get into the rules, I'll explain what that means. But if you see a card that has a black thing down here and white text, this is the life burst effect. And if a life burst would trigger, then this effect would happen. And it also has this fancy little flower symbol on it too. So, I mean, you can have life bursts on pretty much anything. This is um, a Signy that has it. I have a spell card here that also has a life burst on it. Um, so it's pretty much dependent on the cards, and the life burst, of course, would only be on Signy or spells because they make up your your um, your Signy deck. So those are the Signy cards and the spell cards. Again, these basically go in, and you shuffle them together to make your primary deck. Um, additionally, you also have an Elrig deck, which would consist of these cards. So if you're familiar with the anime, this is the bread and butter of what your Elrig is. Um, if we just take a look at this level 4 Elrig. So again, color, name, level, which is the same as the Signy card. It shares the same format. This secondary number here um, indicates how what total level of Signy you can have on the field. Um, so as a level 4 Elrig, I can have a total of 11 levels of Signy on the field. So I could have a 4, a 4, and a 3, for instance. Something like that. Just some, some combination as long as it's less than 11. Also another limiter here, this is where the Signy level comes into play. If I have a level 2 um, Elrig, I cannot play a level 3 Signy. So again, we'll get into the rules in a second, but that's just that what these two numbers mean. Um, art, again, um, effects that will happen, I believe this is an ongoing effect because this is a red. Um, again, I don't know what it means. This is the Elrig type. So kind of on, like on this Signy here, this uh, showed the restriction of the Signy that could use it. This is the actual Signy itself. So as long as you can see the symbols kind of match on them right here, if you put them right next to each other. Again, I can't read Japanese, but I can recognize that these four symbols here are the exact same as the first four symbols here. So that's another way to sort of figure it out. Um, one other thing that's on the Elrig card itself is that there is a grow cost. So if you're familiar with the anime, you know they command their Elrigs to grow somewhat frequently. This is the cost you have to pay in order to grow. So that's what the Elrig cards are. And then the final type of card are Arts cards. These are basically specialized spell cards that you can pretty much play at any time as long as you can afford them. Um, again, color, name, cost. Here's one that has a split cost of one blue and one colorless. Um, art, artwork on the arts card. Uh, if there were any limiters, like here's a limiter on the peeping analyze, as you'd expect, it could only be used by Pirluk. Um, and then the effect of the arts card. So this is pretty much similar, almost exactly similar to spell cards, except the difference is they go in two separate places. And I'll get into what those places are uh, when I do a quick little walkthrough of the rules on how to play, but I figure this is a good baseline of hopefully you will have a better idea of what the cards are, what all of the, the terminology is, just to sort of introduce it to you, and then when we get into the rules, it should hopefully make it easier for you to follow. So, thank you all for watching as usual, and I will see you in the next video.